field of Ephraim the Hittite for the possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. You have just listened to the Bible reading and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We remain standing as we give our tithes and our offering. And before we read, we give our read from Luke's Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke in chapter 6. I'll read verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you measure, we that you measure with, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Let's raise up what that which we brought as we pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of giving. I pray that all that your children are raising up now be sanctified and accepted from every heart given in Jesus' name. And we pray that you take it up and use it in expansion of your kingdom here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We have our brethren with the bags. Please, let's drop it in the offering, in the offering bag.
I think I've lost my way. Still, you're there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the Your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus be my guide, hold me to your side and I will love you to the end.
truths planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our hearts of love and our deeds of faith. your mind put away your fear we need a new visitation a new postulation leading to a new proclamation what wise men great men medical men professional people have not been able to do god will do it all those things that are forgotten your forgotten strength your forgotten power your forgotten revelation everything you said i had a dream long ago and i thought this is what i will do i've forgotten now your forgotten vision will come up again passion will come up again revelation will come up again new life will come up again in your life in jesus name only christ jesus has the power of this new year an unforgettable encounter beckons we are connecting to the god of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance welcome gck to asaba Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at or 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. 
premature death cancelled. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the gospel to every creature. So, when they are dying, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, I feed my lambs. He says unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, that knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him, The third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he says unto him, The third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus says unto him, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. There's a famine in the land. And this is the time when people, they run here, they run there, they cannot find the word of God. And if we don't get to those lambs, if we don't get to those uh, newcomers, if we don't get to those people, the famine in the land will not help, will not help. There's a famine of hearing the word of the Lord in the land. See Paul the Apostle, when those converts were won, when those new churches were planted, he taught them. He taught them from A to Z. Great will be the opportunity for the man. Great the opportunity for the woman that can say, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my might. More than business, more than profession, more than work, more than money, more than material things. Yes, Lord, I love you. But if you're still struggling with that, look at the fish and look at the marketing, and look at the business opportunities, and you cannot give up. You cannot give up a material sin. You cannot give up the pieces of fish. You cannot give up the game. You cannot give up the profession. And when your profession contradicts, so it comes contrary, it kind of collides with the work and the calling of God upon your life, you cannot say, yes, I give it up. Yes, I give it up. Because, yes, Lord, I love you more than all these things then you cannot feed. It's not just a matter of saying, I know some verses of the Bible. I know some scriptures. I'm ready. I'm going to go out now in my spare time, in the fragment of time I want to give, in the little time I want to surrender. I'm going to feed the lambs. No, not at all. It's not looking for fragment. It's looking for your whole heart and your whole mind. It's looking for everything you've got and he wants you to answer the question, lovest thou me more than this before you can reach out and say, I'm going to feed the lambs. Now, if you know anything about the newcomers, if you know anything about the lambs, they have been having a, you know, problems in the past with deception and with lying and they were sin and with iniquity and now you tell them, repent and be born again. Repent and be converted. They repent and they are converted and they come to know the Lord and you say, Christ said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come into him and I will abide with him and sup with him and fellowship with him. And Christ is now on the inside. As you are feeding them, you assure them the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity they will not continue in sin nor speak lies they will not continue in their lying neither shall the deceitful tongue be found in their mouth because they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid Luke was going to write something to a convert, a single convert and he took it from chapter 1 to chapter 2 all through to chapter 24 and then later I was going to write Acts of the Apostles who did he write Acts of the Apostles to? to Theophilus and he was going to write about the history of this so that this new convert will be solid and this new convert will know what he ought to know and he wrote a 28 chapters of the Acts of the Apostles and he gave every detail, every minute detail, that's what we ought to do to make sure that the word of God is enriching the life of the people the word of the Lord is making the people strong you will do it as I'm doing it in Jesus name your compass will be strong in Jesus' name. 
they will desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby they will grow in jesus name when the trumpet shall sound and the saints shall go marching in i'll see you marching in and then I see for the people following you. Be one, two, three, ten, twenty, thirty, a hundred. And I said, Who are these people? You say they are the lambs and they are the sheep that God helped me to feed. You will succeed in the work of God. Rise up and tell the Lord, I will. I will. Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. And I'm going to feed the lambs. I'm going to feed the sheep. I'm going to feed the people of God. The way that we go, the same message, the same doctrine, the same teaching that have been committed to us, the same commit to others who will be able to teach others also. We need to do this job and do it well so that through us, many will be established. Through us, many souls will be strengthened. Through us, 
disciples will be nurtured, strengthened, fortified to serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will train them up also to serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will equip them also to serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord and we will guide them also to serve the Lord. That's the job of a discipler. That's the job of a trainer. That's the job of a true disciple. Teach them, feed them, nourish them, and make them fruitful and productive. That is the job. Tell the Lord, I will. I will. I will serve the Lord. I will worship the Lord in the work. I will show my adoration and my yieldedness and my worship by serving honorably, faithfully, reverently, diligently, fruitfully. Every day, I will serve the Lord. 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 I will preach the word of the Lord. Declare the counsel of the Lord. Teach the people. Nourish the new converts. Establish them in the way of the Lord, in the counsel of the Lord, in the truth that sets free, the truth that fortifies, the truth that sanctifies. Lord, here am I. Help me faithfully, diligently to do this job. Faithfully, diligently, fruitfully, every day, every time, everywhere, I will serve the Lord. I will preach the gospel. And I will disciple saved souls. I will feed the lamb. I will do the work of an evangelist. We have the challenge of Luke, the beloved, who wrote 24 chapters as a follow-up teaching for Theophilus. And thereafter, 28 chapters of the book of Acts, also as a follow-up teaching, instruction, admonition, to the same person. And that letter, that record, that write-up has been the source of encouragement, source of blessing to the whole world up until now. Let's pray. Lord, help me. Help me faithfully, diligently to also teach, minister, write, and do all that needs to be done to disciple souls, to strengthen souls, to establish souls in the way of the Lord, in the counsel of the Lord, in the will of the Lord. Help me, O Lord, to serve you faithfully, fruitfully every day, diligently every day. We will give them word of encouragement, word of assurance. We will make ourselves example of true believers unto the people that we are leading. We will do it with joy, with excitement, with zeal, with commitment, not mechanically, not grudgingly, not as though we have been forced to do it, but with joy, with zeal, with enthusiasm, so that our zeal will provoke others. Our zeal will also be a mentoring zeal and encouraging zeal. Commitment that will also help others to see what it means to be servants of the Lord and help them also to be committed. This is the work. This is the assignment. This is what the Lord expects from every one of us. We must do it. And we will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the command and the commitment you are calling us into. We are pleading, oh God, that you help every one of us, every day, every time, everywhere, to be actively, faithfully involved in the service of our King in Jesus' name. We will show our love. We will demonstrate our love by feeding the lamb, by feeding the sheep, so that they will all be nourished in the way of the Lord, established in the counsel of the Lord, and together, we, they, together, will be fit for eternal rest, eternal joy at the end in Jesus' name. Give us more strength, more grace, more zeal, more commitment, more dedication to do this work and do it well to your glory and praise in Jesus' name. Lead us as we continue in this program. Help your servant that will be ministry 
Our Father in the Lord, we pray you speak to him more unto us and let your blessing flow into our lives, not through this year and all the years of our lives. We will serve you fruitfully to the end in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A bigger amen. Lord, I said praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the first Bible study, first Monday of this new year, 2023, in Jesus' name. Even though I saw some of you yesterday, but this is a new day. Happy New Year to everyone. That's all the Happy New Year you can give back. Praise the Lord. Are you happy? Because when a sad, sorrowful, depressed person is saying Happy New Year, that word happy will come out with uh, an attitude of depression. But if you are happy inside yourself, and you are happy with what God is doing, and what God will do this new year, and the happiness is in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart, everything within you, when that happy comes out, it will really be happy new year. God bless everyone in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for the new journey you are taking us through. Thank you for your word that brings everything we need into our lives. Something spiritual, something physical, something natural, something professional. Lord, we pray that this year will be a truly happy, holy, healthy year, hopeful life for everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, Lord, that your word will do wonders in every life. We receive the word, we embrace the word, we believe the word, and then we act on the word, and great will be your blessing upon our lives this year in Jesus' name. Here at the headquarters and all the churches in Nigeria, Africa, America, everywhere, Lord, we pray that all over the globe, you will bless everyone tremendously in a very special way from this day until the end of the year in Jesus' name. Start with us, Lord. Teach us your word. Reveal your mind to us and we pray that the blessing of the word will come upon every life even tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Daniel chapter 1. In Daniel chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Open your Bible, please. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of, of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinon and to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And then in verse 3 we're told, And the king spake unto Aspenas, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. In verse 4, it tells us children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in, uh, in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Then in verse 5, it says, And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that 
at the end thereof, they might, uh, they might stand before the king. In verse 6, it says, Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Reading from verse 7 now, it says, Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Ananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and unto Azariah of Abednego. Now verse 8, verse 8 says, and, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, for nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. As we look at this, we're beginning the new year with uh, what we have titled here called Chosen and Faithful. That this year, as we begin our lives and we recollect how the Lord has called us, He called us to repentance, He called us to salvation, He called us to sanctification, He called us to holiness, He called us to service. And now we're talking about those who are called. And then many are called, but few are chosen. Those who are called and they respond to the call of God, they are chosen. They become the chosen treasure of God, the peculiar people of God, and the favorite people of God because they have responded to the call that God has given. Number one, call. Number two, chosen and then faithful. It's one thing to be called. Not everybody called responds. And it's one thing to be chosen. Not everyone who has been chosen is faithful all the way through but what a wonderful thing that you are called that you are chosen and that you are faithful in this new year from the beginning of this new year and then as you move on until the end until the consummation and then the blessings of those who are called and the blessings of those who are chosen and the blessings of those who are faithful will be upon every life in Jesus name we're dividing the message to three parts tonight. Number one, the captivity and challenge of the people. The people of Israel, the people of Judah, they had a challenge. The challenge is they had not been living in the goodness of God. They had not been living in the covenant provision of the Lord. And now they were taken into captivity. Number two, the character of the chosen amidst the pollution. Well, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were some of the people carried away to captivity in the first, uh, in the first deportation. They were deported from their land, they were taken from their land, and were taken to the land of Babylon. Good people saints, saints of God and faithful people of God yet they were carried to captivity they wouldn't understand why but as we read the book of Daniel we understand why God allowed that we understand that he wanted Daniel to be a prophet to the Gentiles and a prophet to the Jews. If he had remained only in his country, only in Judah, he would have been a prophet only to Judah, to Jerusalem, but not to Babylon. He also be a prophet of God that will interpret the revelation of God to those, uh, to that king and to, to the son. And he will also show the prophecy to the children of Israel, 70 weeks are determined upon your people without his being carried away like that, all that will not happen and shed up Meshach and Abednego without the deportation and without taking them out of their land onto the land of Babylon, we wouldn't have known that it is possible to fulfill literally the prophecy of Isaiah when you go through the waters, you will not be drowned, when you go through the fire you will not be burnt, even the flame shall not be kindled upon you. It's because they were carried away there that they could go through that same fire and the fiery persecution, the fiery punish could not burn them up. And so, although you may not know the reason why you are passing through this and passing through this, they are sinners. You know, Daniel might say, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego might have said, all these people are sinners. Why 
do the saints have the same Lord and the sinners? Even though you don't understand, this year, whatever you understand, whatever you don't understand, just remain called and chosen and faithful. And at the end of the journey, the Lord will show you why. I will know why. I will know why. Point number three, the courage of conviction with purposeful purity. The courage of, convi of conviction. You see, there are people here or not, they don't have any conviction. They go to synagogue, they go to sanctuary, they go to a temple, they go to assembly, they go to church building, and they worship every time. They go to Jerusalem, they go to the temple there, they go to all the various meetings there. They don't have any conviction. We cannot tell whether somebody has conviction or not until something happens. Anybody can say, I'm serving God, I'm following the Lord, and I will follow the Lord till I die. Until a problem happens, that now you are in a situation, and you have a challenge, and then it is your courage that will show what your conviction is. It is your purpose, it is your determination, it is your diligence, it is your faithfulness, it is your obedience to the word of God that will show that you really have conviction. If you don't have conviction, when the wind blows, it will blow you in their direction, in the direction of the majority of the people. The way they live is the way you live. The way they talk is the way you talk. And the way they behave and act is the way you will behave and act because you didn't have any conviction after all. But when somebody has conviction, whether daddy is there or mommy is there or not, whether the pastor is there or the priest is there or is not there, whether there are people to support and uh, to lift up and to encourage and to counsel or not, you know, here is the conviction I have. In the case of Daniel, there was no pastor, no priest, there was no prophet, there was no counselor, there was no encourager, there was nobody to help him, but he purposed in his heart. That's a converted heart. And that is a convicted heart. And that is a heart that knows that whatever happens. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. But now I come to this situation because he had conviction. He said he purposed in his heart that he whatever others do, that he, whatever others say, that he, whatever others counsel, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the, of the king's meat, neither with the wine which he drank. And so he requested of the, of, the, uh, of the leader of the eunuchs that he would not defile himself. The courage of conviction with Purposeful purity. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the captivity and challenge of the people. We're dividing this to three parts. Look at number one, the predicted captivity of unfaithful people. Number two, is the perplexing condition of an unforeseen period. They did not foresee that period that God could do that to them. Unseen period. Number three, the painful consequence of an unfixed past. Unfixed past. Unsettled past in the sight of the Lord. Let's look at number one. Number one is the predicted captivity of unfaithful people. Now, Judah should not pretend that they didn't know this was coming. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'm reading from verse 9. Jeremiah 29, verse 9. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. There were people that were telling the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, no problem, no problem. God is a good God. My God is not harsh. 
my God is not hard. My God is not bitter. God is love. So the prophets were telling the people of Judah, Jerusalem, the people of Israel. But Daniel, sorry, Jeremiah said, they're not telling you the truth. Because God is a holy God and God is a God of justice and God is a God of judgment. Look at verse 10 there. In verse 10, for thus says the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, Jeremiah was telling them, you are going to Babylon. Captivity is coming. And after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14 it says, And I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. Judah, captivity is coming. Judah, you're going to be in the captive, the dungeon of the Babylonians. And it says, it's after 70 years of return, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. The Lord says, it's not the power of Nebuchadnezzar, that is able to get you out of Judah and get you to Babylon, it is me. God said, I have driven you. They were still in their land. And the Lord said, it's done. Take it that is done. Judah, you are going to captivity. And it says, it's only after the 70 years, I'll take you away then from where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again. I take you there. If you learn your lesson, if you repent, if you turn to the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, if you don't think that this Babylonian captivity is child's play, if you will return, if you will recollect what you should have done, you didn't do. Where you should have been, you were not there. And the loyalty you should have had, and the love you should have had, and the faithfulness you have had, you didn't have. If you recollect, if you repent, and if you now renew your consecration commitment unto me, then I will bring you again into the place whence I cost you, I cost you, I cost you to be carried away captive. And so uh, that's the prediction of the captivity because of their unfaithfulness. How about today? What happens to us? Does anybody ever go to captivity today? Well, there are different kinds of captivity. Look at, um, look at Isaiah chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Therefore, there is something, captivity does not just come out of the blue, out of the sky, and affliction does not rise for no reason. There will be a reason that the covenant people of God, the good people of God, good old days, and the favorite people of God and the peculiar treasure of God, there's a reason why they will go into captivity. It says, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The knowledge of the salvation of the Lord, the knowledge of the character of God, the knowledge of the important thing in the hand of God. You need to have that knowledge and the knowledge of, of following the Lord faithfully. They need to have the knowledge, you say, because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. It even goes beyond this. Look at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, Therefore, hell has enlarged herself. Hell was not expecting so many passengers, so many pilgrims, and so many candidates. But 
but because the people of God, they lack the knowledge of righteousness and the knowledge of holiness and the knowledge of the demand and the decree and the desire of the Lord. And then they follow the wrong way now. Because of that, they go to captivity. And some of them die in the captivity, not only captivity of Babylon, but the captivity of sin and the captivity of evil. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. That was unfortunate for them. Let's got number two there. Number two there is the perplexing condition of an unseen period. They never envisaged this. That if such a time will come, they were perplexed. They were confused. How could this happen? Look at Isaiah chapter 22. We're reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 5. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and crying to the mountains. It says, uh, as the captivity came upon them, uh, they were shocked. They were confused. How could God do this? And they say, Babylon is a sinful, terrible nation. And, and Nebuchadnezzar is an idol worshiper. At least uh, what they thought, we are still worshiping the Lord. Even though we're not perfect, even though we're not doing everything right, but how can God use somebody worse than us to come and replace us? And he'll lift that person up and we will be under his boot. And he'll be, you know, he'll be tre treading upon us. They were perplexed because they did not foresee that period that God will use any instrument to bring down the pride of somebody or nation who is against him. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 137. In Psalm 137, it tells us in verse 3, it says in verse 3, for they that carried, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. They were singing the songs of the Lord. You know, if you read the Psalms, I was singing new song unto the Lord. And they were happy in the Lord. When they came out of the Red Sea, they burst into singing. And they were singing, God is great and God is glorious. And when they overcame in Judges, uh, chapter 4, chapter 5, Deborah and Barak and all of them, they started singing unto the Lord. And uh, when Goliath was, was uh, crossed,